<laughs> Hi guys, it's your two poly chicks again. Hi One of guys. us is under the weather. So excuse my voice and excuse me if I'm coughing or sneezing or runny nose or anything like that in this video. Hey, hey, I gotta, I gotta, you know, <laughs> I, can't, oh, I can't. Oh my gosh. It's been, <laughs> oh man, it's been a week. But today we're going to bring you another election hot topic, which it's yeah. been in the news forever. It's one of those topics that doesn't ever go away. And it's the topic of immigration. So we wanted to talk to you guys about um, immigration, pretty much <laughs> citizens or non-citizens. There's, there's a wide variety of people that live in the United States who's not citizens. Some mm -hmm. of them are here legally and some are not, not here legally. Um, mm -hmm. You have the lawful permanent residents, which are the um, green card holders. They can live here permanently, work here, but they don't have legal citizenship status. You think of athletes, people like Giannis Antetokounmpo and um, Jokic. Those are people that they can work here, they can live here, but they're not citizens, which is why they play under their country and their country's flag for mm -hmm. the Olympics. Um, you have the temporary visa holders. Those are usually students and people that are temporary workers that are over here. They are here legally. Then you have people that are granted asylum, um, refugee status, and you have the temporary protected status like the Haitians that's living in um, Ohio. So Ohio. those are all legal ways to live in America without being a full on citizen. And of course, the full citizen, you know, you have full rights and access to any and everything that the country has to offer. But then there's the illegal he, the people that come here illegally that don't have the paperwork, that don't have the status. And w the the question is, how do we deal with those people? And that's what we wanted to to touch on today. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the illegal the illegal immigrants, which there was a, a bill that was proposed in 2023 where we wouldn't call them aliens anymore. We would call mm -hmm. them. Um, I forget the term. And I had it had it listed non 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 something i thought you said non uh, oh my maybe goodness not. what was it it was it was a word for it but they're they're basically trying to um take away the demonization of the people that are coming here seeking refuge or asylum or just for a better life i mean a lot of people come here to start over because there's in, they're in war-torn countries and things of that nature mm -hmm. um it was i think it was oh my goodness i forget the name of it mm -hmm. But basically, it was taking the, the term alien away from the illegal, quote unquote. I think it was non-citizen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because the word alien makes it sound like you're from out of space or like you're, you know, like you're not a human. You're, you're from right. somewhere. You're alien. Like that yeah. alien means strange. That's what the word yep. alien is, to alienate, to separate, to make you feel strange. And so I... I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, I mean, it also means foreign or something yeah, foreign, foreign or not from. We don't the think place of it. The connotation from. is not that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And and that's the problem. So any something as simple as that being in the bill, um, I think that was the U.S. Citizen Citizenship Act in 23-24 Congress. And then there was another one that was just recently introduced. Um, that one is the Border Act of 2024, which is your favorite person, your Trump, he he, he <laughs> right, attempted right. to kill that bill. So that was, you know, that was another proposal to address the illegal immigrate immigration mm -hmm. status. So mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of bills that that have been introduced. And guys, I want to invite you to go to um, Congress.gov to take a look at what bills are being introduced because, as we always talk about, it's legislation and laws are set forth by Congress, your House of Representatives, your senators. Um, it's it, When you go to congress.gov, it shows you the, the language of the, the bill that's being proposed, who introduced it. Sometimes they're working together and you don't even know. You see them fighting on the screens and you know arguing back and forth, but they're working on a piece of legislation or a, mm -hmm. instead of say legislation, let me say law, a, a law <laughs> that they're working together and you they're can co look at yeah, yeah, they're co-workers. They're co exactly. They're co exactly. So what, what, we go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I've, been, I've been talking a lot. Go, go, go. <laughs> no, what I was just gonna say, I think just to just put a big, a big highlight on it is just what the issue is now with immigration is just that because immigration is now being linked to crime and housing. 
So mm -hmm. because crime seems to be whatever it is, and because housing and because of inflation and because people feel stretched in their pockets and everything, now it's a thing of point the finger at who's causing this. So either you're going to blame the president, you're going to blame Congress, or you're going to blame all these people that are here that we can't take care of. Babies, we can't, kind of like babies, you can't take care of a whole bunch of. So that's really the issue with immigration. It's not, I don't think. And then there's some, of course, there's the racial aspect of it. Like you, you know, we've always talked about it and you always say it's the brown people that really is the ones that they really point to because they don't point to like, who did you say before? Like people from um, Russia, Norway, and even a lot of Asian people are here illegally. Right. And for some reason, when you see the TV, when you look at TV, they're not pointing out those illegal um I don't want to say alien, the, the illegal non-citizens that are here, mm -hmm. they're focused more on people from the South American border. So yeah, yeah. That's it's a mostly big them. And now Haiti, mm -hmm. um, at one point it was like Jamaica or whatever, Africans. So I was, mm -hmm. at one time we were talking before I had said, I'm, I'm a product of high school in the eighties. And I remember the demonization of Haitian, but I also remember yeah. the demonization of West Indians period. Yeah. And like you said, I I don't, I mean, there's times like when, when Corona came out, Asians were blamed for it, but for the most part, it's not lighter skinned people. It definitely is brown people, Hispanic people. And those are the ones you blame. What I wanted to say is we, you know, if you read like Twitter, Instagram, like I'm on, you'll see a lot of the cronies on the Republican side will say the borders are open, the borders are open, the borders are open. And I'm like, <laughs> You just are an idiot because you just don't understand how the border works. First of all, you don't understand that the border has been open forever, quote unquote yeah. open. You don't understand, number two, that that guy that was in office before, he never did anything to fix the problem, um, which is what I know you always say. And then he stole, my thing is he stole the money that was given, the, the people that he hired to fix the border stole the money and then they mm -hmm. went to jail and he pardoned them, Steve Bannon being one of them. You can Google it. And yep. the other thing is about the border. If you're going to vote based on that issue, like you're going to blame Kamala now for that issue, you need to know the border is more than just the United States. A border means it, it abuts on some other country. And yep. that country has to agree with what you're going to do. You can't just be over there going, I'm closing up this area. I'm just going, it's like somebody coming and closing your doors in your house if you want to leave them open. Yeah. No, if you want to leave them open, then they're open. So now we're on the border with Mexico. We're on the border with Canada. We can't just go, although we don't really fight against Canada. We can't really just go and be like, close all of this crap up and get all of these. No, it has to be an agreement between countries of how we're going to deal with this issue, which is the reason why him killing that bill that was, was designed to address this issue, it was really a big deal. Because what did you yeah. say? I won't steal your thunder about what you said about that bill and what it entailed and the resources. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the bill, and like I said, I keep telling you guys, go to congress.gov and take a look for yourself because it's still being, it's in the introduced phase. And it shows when, when it passes through Senate, the House, whether or not the president signs it. That's really what the president does. See, the president can, you know, kind of persuade the the senators and the, the congressmen to you know, enact these laws or to introduce these laws, but then they're the ones that have to fight through it and, and vote on those laws and say whether or not it should become. I think what Trump did and what the what is being reported is that he spoke to some of the senators and was like, do not vote. Don't let this thing pass. Part of what was in the um in the bill and in, in the, the word from last year, it was lawful prospective immigrant for some who's applying who um, meet certain requirements. So that would be the new status of lawful prospective immigrant, that they're mm -hmm. going through the paperwork for um, status. So they, they wouldn't be um, illegal or classified as that. But the Border Act of 2024, which is with your guy kind of like, info, I don't mm -hmm. want to say infiltrated, he kind of like put his foot in and was like, hey, don't do that. It was authorizing Department of the Department of Homeland Security officers to um, address the processing of migrants. So part of the problem is that there's not enough enough manpower. There's not right. enough resources at the border. There's not enough judges. There's not enough asylum um, 
personnel to to process these things. So they gave the, that board, that bill was supposed to hire more and also give them more authority to deal with the border itself. They they were mm -hmm. able to remove or prohibit entry with the border agents themselves. They were able to they were given that authority. Um, they also would be able to adjudicate or make decisions on certain claims. So they would put asylum offices in place that can actually adjudicate those claims versus having it go up through the court system. Um, right. So with resources, we need mm -hmm. a lot of the resources. And Cindy, you know who worked on, it was border agents, people that were involved in the actual day-to-day -day actions the that was actually the helping yeah. formulate this bill. So, yeah. and everyone agreed, you know, the rumblings was everyone, Republican, Democrat, they were all like, yeah, this is a good, solid bill. And then what happened? No one could, you notice whenever they say, well, he came and tore up the bill, they never say, oh, it was a bad bill. They always just kind of like gloss over it. They're like, oh, well, look over there. <laughs> it's like, it's never one of those things. Oh, am I frozen? Or are you frozen, Cindy? I'm not sure who's frozen. So. I'm just going to keep talking until Cindy comes back because it doesn't show that I'm not frozen or that it, it doesn't show that I am frozen. So I'm not sure who is not on. Oh, it's Cindy. Cindy got knocked off. She's gone. She's out of here. So now I can wake up. Okay, so we're back. We had to, we had to stop. Hey, technology is great when it works and it's, you know, kind of sucky when it doesn't so but what yeah, I was this time is saying me, was guys. That, yeah this time it was Cindy I was like oh is it me is it Cindy but this time hey what do we do but what I was saying um before our our disconnection was that mm -hmm. you when you hear people talk about the border act of 2024 which like I said is still in under congress.gov it's still sitting there you can read it you can take a look at it you don't ever hear them say that it was a bad bill or that it was something wrong with the bill. They're always like, look over there. Like they changed the subject because the bill, since it had so many people involved in it and so many of the people that's doing the groundwork and so many experts telling what they needed, that it was a, a good solid bill that everyone came together and could agree on and was going to vote yes on, or not everyone, most people, it would have passed. So um, yeah, I don't you do know need if you those resources. It, did you say it was bipartisan? I don't know if you said that part. Yeah, it, it was yeah, it, that's what I was okay. saying. Everything it was, it was, I, it was going to be a bipartisan bill. Yeah, where yeah. everyone, Republican and Democrat, would have voted and workers, yes, yeah, in some and form workers. or fashion. So, what I and, wanted and to... the bottom line is, we need resources. We need those resources at the border. We can't fix yeah, it without it's having crazy. those resources. It's, it's like Kamala said it best. He wants to run on a problem as opposed to a solution. So if yep. you would, if she, if that bill would have passed, if you don't understand what's happening there, if that bill would have passed, why would he kill a bill that would help Americans? Because if that know. bill would pass, then he wouldn't have anything to campaign on. And you know, he's running from prison. So he needs to have something because it can't be that inflation is good and the economy is good and and there's no and water, problem. the water problems. We're yeah. doing all of these things. Yeah. Like, wait a people minute. People tend to, yeah, people tend to vote for the incumbent. They tend to vote for the person already in office if there's no big problem. So that's yeah. the reason why he's savvy enough to know that if there's no problem, then people are going to automatically vote for the same person again. So he was even mad at yeah. the Fed, as a side note. He was mad at the federal for lowering the in interest rate for people because he knows that that's an economy issue and people tend to vote in the economy. Um, what I wanted to just it. add in as our final point to end is um, the immigration issue becomes an issue, like I think I said before, when it's about jobs, housing, schools, hospital resources, and when crime happens. Because if a crime happens and they say he was an illegal alien that did that or a person that wasn't a resident here, then that's when it looks like, oh, my God, they're coming in here and they're doing. But the federal government under Mr. Trump had already said that the biggest threat here, not that they don't commit crimes, but the biggest mm -hmm. threat to America right now is white nationalism, racist people that are here. Um, saying that they're the, they the, that these people are poison in the blood. He used that terminology of poison in the blood of Americans, which is a Hitler-like term, which is a term mm -hmm. from Nazi Germany. Um, yeah. the other the other thing I wanted to say was that the borders 
are an issue, not a border. Immigration is an issue in places like London, China, Canada, everybody all over the world, because like Tiffany already said, it's because people are escaping war-torn countries like Haiti, yep. war-torn countries like Venezuela and communist countries. And so people are trying to escape and go anywhere. Just like yeah. guys, and if you want to be hypocritical of that, I know it's kind of a false equivalent, but remember we were trying to get into um, Mexico to get tissue when we didn't have tissue during the pandemic <laughs> and people were just like going over there getting all that. Imagine if Mexico said, my board is closed. Um, your president didn't want us over here. He called us mur rapists, murderers, and all that. So in other words, border issues, even there's a border like with Haiti and, Dom and um, Dominican Republic, there's a border there that they have problems with. Border problems are not an issue that just some incompetent dummy like Kamala and Biden can't handle. That's an yeah. issue that happens in countries all over the world. It's a it's a it's a worldwide issue. When, yes. Wherever there is a border and a country touching those borders, there's yeah. always going to be an issue of how yeah. to resolve it. And one of the other things, I I don't want to demonize any of the immigrants illegal or legal because what happens is when you mm -hmm. hear people on like i said i watch all types of news you hear fox news that it's the fear that fear element of if we keep letting third world yep. nations in we'll become a third world nation we'll become like haiti or venezuela and they start showing the pictures and then people are fearful so that false evidence appearing real they're thinking mm -hmm. oh i don't want to be like that but that's a false equivalency you're you're if you're saying that just because you allow certain people come to come in that will now become those nations i i can't buy into that and then as, as far as the strain on resources yes when more yeah. people come in there can and will be a strain on resources teachers healthcare homes but we have to put a we have to figure out what the how we resolve that problem because we're always and have have yeah. and will always be a country built on immigration that's just the bottom line. We that's are definitely, we are. That's, that's our representation. And the final mm -hmm. point is that immigrant people that are here legally and illegally are very mm -hmm. hypocritical. A lot of them, because they be like, close the border. Why are all of these <laughs> people here? Meanwhile, you just got here or we're all pretty much came here, shipped yeah. here somehow, smuggled in somehow. And all of a sudden we care about the border. Like I said before, and I always say that guy who's trying to threaten to deport everybody that doesn't agree with him or whatever, um, two out of three of his wives are from somewhere else. Yeah. So I think that's interesting. <laughs> well, like I did with anyway. Florida. Remember when I told you I moved to Florida and I'm like, why are all these New Yorkers moving down here? What's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, they need to go. Yeah, stay what's up, what's up with that? Like, she's straight up Brooklyn, y'all, from the Yeah, hood. I'm like, they need to go back <laughs> somewhere else. They're increasing the prices. They And it's not just that. But, you know, yeah. it, it, it's yeah. just... Look, like I always like we continuously say, if it was an easy fix, it would have been fixed with Obama, with it Biden, with Bush, with Clinton, and it's an ongoing issue. It would have been fixed with Trump it, if he could have fixed it. So it, it's just and, not and an he easy can't because it's an, it's so. an, it's an intricate issue. And if you are a yeah. Bible believer, like a lot of the religious right says they are, God literally spent two or three chapters in Exodus, Leviticus, and those. Just look it up talking about how to house people from other countries of strangers in the land. He literally mm. made them designate land for strangers. So yeah. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, to, but I that's, that's our take on it, guys. You can always find us poly chicks. If you're watching you, you've already, you already see where we are. And then we have two yeah. poly chicks on X, Instagram, Facebook, at Gmail. And you can always hit us on our personal cells. If you know us. All right. Bye guys. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>